soon. Uh, hello, dear students. I'm glad uh, to see you. And uh, today we will have our lecture in this um, in this uh, in our meet online meeting. Uh, and uh, we will speak about the preparation of uh, teas and uh, this preparation about the different of classes of curious cavities. And uh, we will speak about the classification of uh, classes of carious cavities in uh, temporary and permanent teeth in children. If you have some question, of course, you can uh, write in our um, messages here, or you can speak uh, with me after lecture. Uh, so let's start. Um, of course, we know about the carrier, about the decay, about the carriers, and uh, we know uh, that uh, it is uh, dental diseases is very progressive damage. Yes, and uh, uh, this uh, um, this uh, disease uh, of hard tissues of the tooth and the carriers process leads to complications such as inflammation of the coronal and root pulp. Uh, so, uh, you can see uh, the small picture on our slides. Uh, the first picture, uh, you can see uh, the um, spot in enamel. Uh, and um, the next one, it's decay. Okay, so first, uh, it's uh, superficial uh, caries. And next, it's uh, uh, the first layer. Uh, of our tooth, it's enamel, and the second, the third, it's uh, a deep carous cavity, and the next one you can see the pulp and inflammation because a patient had a carous cavity, deep carous cavity, and don't treat the carous, for example, in the first or uh, second stages. Even third stages, we can uh, um, do some tests. We can uh, decide uh, and choose the correct uh, variant of the treatment. And um, the most uh, varieties of treatment in these uh, cases, we can um, we can do filling, or we can uh, treat the root canals, and then we can do filling. Okay, next one. So, uh, tooth caries is a pathological process uh, that uh, occurs after the eruption of tooth and caused by influence of external and internal factors. Uh, so, uh, manifested uh, by demineralization and destruction of hard tissues with the formation of the defect uh, in form of cavity. Uh, here you can see the initial carrier's process and decay. So it's uh, temporary teas. Of course, um, it's normal to have the process of demineralization. But uh, in our oral cavity, we have uh, the mechanisms of remineralization. And uh, when we have uh, the good remineralization active, uh, in our saliva, mm, we don't have icarious uh, defects. And of course, here we need uh, to have a good uh, oral hygiene, of course, because it's the first uh, reason of uh, decay. Then, about the preparation technique. Mm, first of all, uh, we need to do a preliminary preparation, okay? and uh, restoring the original shape of the tooth. Uh, for example, if we have uh, some uh, decay, uh, for example, in the um, chewing surface, uh, of course, we need to do a good restoration and we need to do uh, good uh, edges. Uh, or if uh, we speak about the um, frontal uh, teeth, uh, of course, we need to do a good, um, good uh, cut edge. 
and do uh, good restoration. Uh, next one, the preparation of cavity should be as gentle as possible in relation to be healthy heart tissues of the tooth. Very necessarily step. Uh, next one, the filling must be retained in the tooth for a long time. Uh, of course, very important uh, that it does not harm the marginal periodontal pulp and the body as a wall. So, we have uh, uh, operative treatment yeah, of Keras cavity act, uh, completed by its formation, restoration of an anatomical shape, uh, then uh, very necessarily um, now aesthetic qualities because we have very good restorative materials nowadays. Um, and uh, we need to, to do this restoration very functional. Uh, in this picture, you can see the um, part of a burst, yes, and you can see a form of the um, carious cavity of the uh, preparation area. Uh, then, uh, the success of surgical and restorative treatment depends on uh, first, uh, of course, it's effective treatment measures and uh, air elimination, uh, the carrier's process. Uh, next one, it's uh, technical excellence in the preparation of the carrier's cavity and its preparation for filling. Then uh, we need to, to know about the properties of materials uh, because uh, some properties such as physical, chemical and biological properties, um, sometimes we have different situations, different cases, and we need to know about these properties. It's very necessary for, uh, next, uh, for our next uh, effective effectiveness of uh, the treatment. Uh, then uh, the level of professional training of uh, the doctor, of course, and uh, when you will start your practice, of course, it uh, will be very hard, um, but we have many varieties uh, to do this uh, professional training. Uh, we have many uh, we have many techniques for do this. Uh, of course, uh, if you will have some uh, free time at your work, uh, you can take the teas uh, and uh, do some endodontic treatment or restorative treatment. It's very necessary for all of doctor. And uh, for example, it's don't. Um, for example, if you start your practice, of course, you need uh, more training. Uh, and then at the next, uh, if you have five or ten years of your practice, of course, you need to do professional training, but maybe uh, not uh, very often. Next one, uh, principles of the um, preparation. Of course, we think about the preventive expansion, expansion of the cavity. And uh, we know about the Black's principle. Uh, and um, the next part of our lecture, uh, we speak about the Black's class classification. And um, Black, it's uh, the doctor. And uh, she, he, um, he had and proposed uh, the classification um, because um, in the in the past we don't have good, uh, we didn't have good materials, and some principles uh, we have for a Siemens especially. Uh, then prevention is expansion uh, and Black's principle it's uh, expansion expansion for the carous cavity in the immune zones. Sorry. Uh, then uh, the principle of uh, biological expediency mm, when we do our preparation in healthy areas of the enamel and dentin. Uh, this uh, principle is most act, uh, actual now. Uh, the principle of technique uh, um, uh, ration, uh, rationality is uh, uh, creating the best condition for fixing the seal. And the classification. 
So um, we have five uh, main classes uh, and we have the sixth class. I will uh, tell you about this class. It's uh, very now is very often a uh, clinical picture in sixth class. So first, uh, first class, uh, when you see the carous cavity in the fissure area and um, natural uh, indentation of the teeth. Or, for example, we can say showing surface. Okay, can you see? So our fissures, imagine, yeah, here, look, please. And here we have carious process, it's first class. The second class. Uh, the second class, when we see the cavities on the proximal surfaces uh, of molars and premolars, mm, you can see the example and you can see an X-ray. So, as you know, um, when a patient comes to you and wants some treatment, uh, the first step that you need to do is X-ray. It's very necessary because, for example, if patient uh, went uh, to the other clinic and after that uh, come to you, and, for example, in the root canals, uh, this patient uh, has... Um, some uh, part of instrument uh, and if you uh, start your work without x-ray uh, so then uh, for example patient can say that doctor it's your problem not mine and not the previous doctor so very natural situation be attention please and uh, on x-ray you can see the area of the cavity because if you have deep carous cavity and we have the pulpitis, for example, chronic pulpitis, and this deep carous cavity um, contact with the cavity of our teeth, uh, so here we don't uh, need filling, we need first of all its endodontic treatment and then uh, restorative uh, therapy or orthopedic treatment. The third class, mm, it's frontal teeth, and uh, it is cavities on the proximal surfaces of incisors and canines, uh, while maintaining the incisal edges. And, of course, you can see some examples for you. Because in this situation, okay, uh, we need to do a necrectomy, we need to do preparation of the cavity, but we can uh, do here restorative therapy, okay? But if you see uh, that uh, in some situation, for example, you can see in cavity a very soft uh, layer of a dentin, okay? Of course, uh, and if you do uh, some um, temperature tests, you see the x-ray and you understand that this uh, teeth, th this tooth has uh, mm, the palpal disease, yeah? So pulpitis, chronic pulpitis. Of course, you also need antidotic treatment. Uh, you understand, guys? Everything okay? Yes. 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 And, okay. Uh, the first class, uh, very interesting because uh, now we use in uh, our practice we use the modern restorative uh, materials for example composites yeah mm, you know about this materializing mm, we can use uh, in the pediatric dentistry uh, we can use uh, glass ionomer siemens or we can use uh, compomeres compomeres it's kind of material where we mixed two materials. First, it's composite, and second is glass ionomers. Uh, and um, it's very necessarily uh, information because uh, here we have a cavity also in proximal surfaces of incisors and canines with violation of the cutting edge. And uh, on this um, Example, you need to do very good uh, restorative uh, qualities. So um, we don't, uh, we need uh, to 
have a good material we need to, to take uh, colors that need patient shade yeah. uh, so and uh, of course for your uh, future practice um it's very difficult uh, to do to to take uh, the um, good sheet of material because uh, when you don't have a practice every day uh, it can be difficult so what we can do in this situation of course we need to do um, here uh, their small uh, polishing of our uh, cutting edge and then of course we need uh, to see the shade of uh, the tooth when we have uh, different materials and uh, when our uh, tooth uh, has uh, saliva um, at the first stages of our treatment because uh, when if you don't do this and you do some preparation and then you leave the tooth then you're doing the isolation from saliva uh, so this tooth will be dry and you uh, don't um, understand the shade then um, you can take the small portion of material and leave near there uh, and leave on your tooth yeah here and then you can see for example because uh, the shade uh, the shades uh, of materials it's very difficult to do the in uh, the practical skills when you don't have many patients uh, but this method uh, it's good so you take for example four portion of different materials and you see uh, okay it's good shade i can leave for it uh, or for example it's very yellow shade for these tools or very white okay next one for five class uh, Cavities on the buccal or lingual smooth surfaces are located in the gingival part of tooth crown. And also the examples. You can see. And now some doctors use a uh, composite in this situation. And other uh, use uh, uh, their glass ionomers. So... Um, but uh, we remember about our properties of material. And here, first of all, if we need uh, the composite restoration, we need to do very good isolation. Uh, so we're doing uh, our anesthesia, for example. Next, next step, uh, we need to do isolation from saliva. We use uh, rubber dam. Uh, then we do the preparation okay and uh, we need to do isolation from the uh, uh, gingival because uh, we have not good restoration if we don't do these steps and the five class uh, the sixth class and um, sometimes uh, when you will have your exams uh, we can speak about the sixth class and sixth class uh, when patient has um, the carious cavity or spots uh, on the edges or cutting uh, edge. So it's very often a clinical picture now. And some video you can see. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't. One minute. А во время просмотра можно. One minute. I'm sorry, guys. Some technical problems. Оно просто перелистывает мне слайд. Оно просто перелистывает слайд. Я нажимаю на видео, оно перелистывает следующий. Mm, guys, because here the fifth class and you can see the isolation and you can see the preparation of a cavity. 
So very good uh, video we search, but I can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, one minute. If I uh, can't turn on, uh, then we um, leave these uh, videos on the record of lecture, okay? Okay. okay. Guys, okay, um, we will uh, um, give you record of lecture on our channel in YouTube, and then you can see for class five restoration, especially if it's near the gingiva. In this example, we're using a rubber dam with a B5 rubber dam retainer, but you could also use something similar like a number two card. Place the light switch on, tape it to the height of the contour on the local surface first, then slide the facial jaw about one millimeter apical to the region. Use an explorer as needed to invert the rubber dam into the gym. Teacher, our lecture, our lecture is finished? With a 271 tapered fish no. or round burr, if you prefer, create a crescent or semicircle shaped preparation following the gingival contour. Extend mesial and distal to include the extent of decay or the non-carious cervical defect. Prepare to a uniform axial depth following the convexity of the surface that you're working on, in this case, the facial surface. Extend into dentin only if the defect or caries calls for it. Be sure to create divergent walls, which will naturally result from the shape of the tapered fissure burr. Bevel all the enamel margins except the gingival margin with a tapered diamond. You can, however, remove unsupported enamel from the gingival margin as shown here. Teacher, uh, we will do this preparation in our practical class. Since they are subject to greater tensile forces. Teacher, your microphone is off. Turn on your microphone. We cannot hear you. Thank you, guys. Uh, of course, if you want, uh, we can organize such um, lessons and uh, take the tools and work. No problem. Okay. Sorry, teacher. 
half the diameter of the quarter round burr. No matrix is necessary here, so apply 30 to 40% phosphoric acid etch to the entire preparation to clean off surface debris and remove the smear layer of dentin. Let it sit for about 15 to 20 seconds and then wash it off thoroughly with water and high volume suction, rinsing for about 10 seconds. Gently dry the tooth, but leave it somewhat moist so you don't collapse the dentin collagen fibrils. Apply and scrub Prime and Bond adhesive with a micro brush to all walls and floors of your preparation. Gently air thin the bond to evaporate the solvent. and then cure for about 10 seconds. Place your first increment of composite material directly into the preparation, being sure to fill in the retention features first. With the flat composite instrument, compact the composite into the preparation while also beginning to shape it to match the convexity of the tooth, leaving part of the instrument on the composite and part on the natural tooth structure. Add additional composite as needed and continue to shape the material, dipping the hand instrument into some adhesive to prevent the composite from pulling off and sticking to the instrument. The closer you can get during this stage, the less contouring and finishing you'll have to do later. Once you're happy with the contour, cure for about 20 seconds or as directed by the manufacturer. Check for any material deficiency within an explorer before moving on to the next step. You can contour the composite further with a flame-shaped finishing burr to recreate the natural anatomy of the tooth. Use light strokes as needed while maintaining contact with both composite and natural tooth structure to avoid inadvertently gouging the material. You may need to hold the rubber dam or soft tissue out of the way when performing this step. Check for flash and any irregularities within an explorer. A number 12 curved scalpel blade can be used to carefully contour and remove flash. Again, carefully hold soft tissue out of the way as needed. You can verify smoothness with an explorer. Finally, you can finish and polish the restoration with a silicone impregnated rubber polishing cup. Green, then yellow, and then white is the typical coarse-defined Jiffy polishing system.
You can then remove the rubber dam retainer and the rubber dam. Once this is complete, you can get a better look at the gingival margin and if any corrections or adjustments need to be made. An alternative option for isolation is using a retraction cord and cotton rolls. The cord is first brought adjacent to the gingival sulcus with cotton pliers and then placed into the sulcus by using a flat instrument or an explorer and carefully but firmly pressing down on the cord along the contour of the tooth, walking it from one interproximal area to the other. Note that you should always start from the interproximal area where the cord is easiest to compact. If the tissue is blanching, select a smaller size cord. An FP1 instrument is another great choice. The retraction cord can also be soaked in a hemostatic agent prior to placing in order to prevent bleeding. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Okay. And we continue. Oh, sorry. Can you see the presentation now? No. No, not you too. Mm. Okay. And now? Yes. 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 Good, thank you. Mm. Yes. Then, um, six classes also and uh it's uh, i think it's also video yes yes mm -hmm. okay uh we will see it later then preparation stages uh first uh, we need uh, so, the overhanging edges of the enamel are removed in order to create access for uh, inspection and a subsequent preparation. So, we need uh, to take the small shape of the bores and for enamel, we use bores. Okay, so uh, the shape of bores you can um, choose uh, by self because some doctors like uh, to take spherical uh, diamond heads, uh, some like uh, take um, to um, olive shape bores. Then, but for a dentin and for soft dentin, uh, you need to take the uh, carbid bores and which is less than the diameter of the inlet into the keras cavity. So it's normal size for keras cavity. It's very big and very small. 
Then, uh, resolution, uh, of course, uh, when expanding uh, and fissures uh, affected by carriers are removed, uh, then enamel edge is revealed and sharp uh, um, corners are rounded. Uh, then, uh, we can take the fissure heads for enamel and then uh, we see all carous cavity and we can see where uh, we need uh, the necroectomy and where we need to continue our work. Necroectomy, uh, removal of carous uh, altered, uh, so here softened or pigmented dentin. You need to understand that uh, we can see the pigmented dentin but this pigmented dentin can be infected or non-infected. Infected dentin, uh, it's uh, the layer of soft dentin, and when you work with a bores, you can see on your bores very soft and um, like uh, water, like a water with dentin, so it's very, um, very soft tissue. Uh, but when you work with pigmented dentin, but non-infected, you can see a uh, very dry tissue. And sometimes we can leave pigmented dentin uh, under the our feel, but uh, only if this uh, layer uh, is non-infected. Understand? Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes, uh, and uh, they are performed using sharp excavator of different sizes um, and spherical uh, bores. Uh, then uh, you can see also the shape. Yes, I'm sorry. And then uh, to identify the mineralized enamel and dentin, uh, we can use uh, the um, carrier's marker and uh, its uh, special paint, uh, paint solution. Um, and uh, we can uh, paint our uh, carrier's cavity and where you can see the color area. Um, it's mean that you need uh, to work in this area because it is infected layer. The formation of carous cavity and processing of uh, enamel edges. At this stage of preparation, carous cavity have their final shape. And um, when you uh, treat, okay, and when you treat, for example, the first class. Sorry, guys. When you work, uh, for example, first class, yes, and you need to do your restoration very good and as a continuum of the walls. If you see um, some lines and you can take a probe and uh, doing probing near the, your restoration and you see the lines or maybe some cavities small, it's not good. And uh, for, the, for this, uh, we need to do the special um, finishing yeah, and polishing of our walls. The preparation technique uh, varies depending on the black glass of the, ca of the cavity and the filling of the affected tissues, the edges and walls of the cavity are smoothed, so finishes, okay? These three types are only... Sorry? These three types of finishing the shapes in this picture, uh, was, uh, all of them are truly... Uh, the three types, because uh, we have... Uh, it's the first time, the first step uh, when we have the box uh, for some cements, uh, we use this box shape for. Uh, and uh, for example, for amalgam, I don't know in your countries now doctors use amalgam or not. In some cases, yes. In some cases, in yes. In some cases, yes. Yes, because uh, yeah, in Ukraine now we don't use uh, uh, amalgam. Uh, 
Um, and uh, we don't uh, do these uh, cavities. But if in your countries you work with amalgam, you need to do uh, this. You need to do some... I think in deeper uh, preparation, uh, doctors use amalgam. Not, not, not deeper, but you need uh, not a box shape. You need to do some edges, okay? Here. Yes. Mm -hmm. For amalgam. It's for uh, cements. Uh, this one uh, you can use for composites. For composites, uh, we are uh, doing preparation by the um, Lukomsky and by the biological um, theory. Uh, we uh, do preparation only uh, carriers um, and uh, pigmented dent and soft dent. We don't uh, do in preparation such as, for example, box shape. And we um, we need to save uh, the healthy uh, tissues of the tooth. And this one, it's preparation for um, composites and for glass ionomers, maybe. As a result of cavity preparation, um, it is the uh, enamel, you can see. And that's the second layer, it's dentin. And you can see the dentin and enamel junction. Yeah. This layer is very sensitivity for a patient. And for example, you can work in this area, and uh, it uh, can be very painful, very painful uh, patient. Then uh, you can uh, you need to uh, do necrectomy here, and um, here you can see the third class, the second class, yes, then proximal surfaces and uh, their clinical picture after the preparation. Uh, here you can take some photos and you need to write the synopsis very good because some um, question you will have in tests. And these tests um, on, our, on this topic, it's not very simple. Uh, so, in an ordinary, many surface uh, a cavity of lateral tooth uh, surfaces are uh, distinguished uh, images in fi figure. Then, a distal cavity wall, cavity bottom, edges of cavity here. Then, palpal uh, wall of the cavity. It is additional square. Okay, and uh, second class, because here additional square, sorry, because second class. And um, in the past, uh, I continue uh, that we don't have very good uh, adhesion of material. And um, doctors understand that uh, if they don't, didn't uh, do some uh, um, retention points uh, or uh, some retention areas or additional square, uh, these feelings uh, don't stay very long time in, in the tooth. So, and uh, the use of high-speed instruments and the first stage of preparation, uh, of course, for enamel structure and we need uh, to have a water um, then, therefore, is necessarily finishing of enamel edges, fine grained diamond bore at medium and high speeds, as well as using a hand tool or uh, oscillating, oscillating, sorry, nail files. Requirements for the preparation of carrot's cavity. Uh, first, we need to removal of all pathological um, tissues. Then we need to, to, allow to leave a thin layer of softened dentin as a cover of the pulp, so covering the pulp during sterilization of this layer. 
Then the edges of the cavity should be accessible for inspection. Of course, the second step, if uh, we know that this tooth uh, don't have the pulp inflammation, we can do this step. But if we it, it, see x-ray and to, if we understand that uh, for example chronic pulpitis in this tooth so we don't um, use uh, this step because we can uh, have uh, the pain of these tooth and we can see inflammation after some period of a time the edges of the enamel should not have sharp uh, edges and corners, they should be thick and directed vertically to the surface of the tooth. Then uh, their uh, entrance to the cavities should not be less than internal cavity. When using filling materials that do not have adhesive properties, the cavity should be formed with the creation of conditional for mechanical fixation. It's um, we have uh, such materials as uh, cements or amalgam and uh, this uh, uh, aspect uh, for this uh, type of materials. And cavity requirements uh, depending on material. Uh, so material glaciolomers, uh, here we uh, need to per uh, need to pearl shaped. Uh, then uh, um, overhanging edges are allowed with a small cavity because glass and number cement have very good adhesion for a dental and for enamel. Amalgam uh, right angles and retention points are uh, clearly formed. Remember, yes, that we don't need the box uh, shaped uh, form. We need uh, some angles, do some angles for mechanical adhesion of our filling. Then chemical uh, cure composite, uh, pearl-shaped and overhead edges are allowed with a small cavity. And slight curing composite, uh, more complex cavity configuration, internal corners and uh, contours must be smoothen and rounded. Mm, and uh, be attention because chemical uh, composite, uh, when I finish my uh, university and I have a practice, I work with chemical uh, cure composite, but now uh, we don't use it too wide. Uh, maybe in some hospitals doctors use, but more um, quality, yeah, it uh, will be the light curing composite. Then the size the volume of the pulp chamber, uh, relatively a small thickness of enamel and dentin. The rate for of, uh, pre uh, of pre preparation of the cavity process and low uh, properties of the dental pulp. You can see the small carous cavity and the small filling. It's uh, glaciolomy. Then, uh, it is difficult to determine the depth of keras lesion in temperature, therefore the preparation features are as follows. So, before preparation, it is necessary to rinse the keras cavity with antiseptics. Then, prepare very carefully, but the first step is X-ray, of course. Next one, work uh, at low roughs uh, with burrs, then Apply constant cooling. Uh, do not use excessive force uh, during preparation. Uh, use bores of large size. Uh, then and uh, carefully at low speeds or use an excavator to process the bottom of the carous cavity. But uh, sometimes uh, we use excavator, but we don't have good result. Uh, for example, some uh, soft layer we can uh, leave in this cavity and it. Uh, can be the secondary decay in the future. So it's not very good. Sometimes we don't mm, do with excavator our work very well. Then form of the bottom of cavity according to the projection of the pulp chamber. Then with the correct diagnosis, say it is allowed to leave a small amount of uh, altered dentin at the bottom of the cavity. Then, when preparing uh, cavities uh, third and fourth classes, the cavity is opened and prepared from the vestibular side for bad excess and reliable fixation to the filling. So next one. 
Mm, what we can do uh, during our preparation? Of course, preparation of the pulp chamber bottom. Then thinning the and breaking of the tooth wall, crown angle. Injures of the gingival mar margin, then thermal pulp burn. Uh, so that is why we need a water when we work. Uh, loss of feeling and secondary and complicated caries. So it's uh, the main mistakes. Preparation tools for the preparation and finishing of the cavity. Various instruments are used, uh, which are conventionally divided into manual, rotary, and uh, oscillating. Rotary tool uh, with different speeds are fixed on straight and control angle hand pieces. For each stage of cavity preparation, processing and polishing of the filling, different instruments uh, with different numbers of revolution are used while observing the established for each type of rotary instrument maximum number of revolution. Then, in addition, high rotary uh, speed and high pressure, a significant amount of heat is uh, re released, uh, which can um, adversely uh, affect the living pulp. And therefore, it is especially important to monitor proper water cooling and work with stocky movements. Then, it is uh, our distinguisher range ultra high, high, medium, and low. It's speed. Disclosure and finishing uh, the walls uh, of the cavity are performed in high and ultra high speed ranges and nec necrotizing carous cavity formation and pollution is low and medium speed ranges. Uh, two rotating tools, uh, so he, we include uh, bars, uh, grinding stones, discs, then uh, it can be silicon hands or um, special rubber polishers with uh, grinding materials attached to them. And bars, uh, it's a cutting tool made of steel or carbide, uh, the cutting edges of uh, which can be straight, uh, oblique and multidirectional. The number of cutting edges can also be different. The same group of tools included ball-shaped bars, carbide bars and finishers. And it's um, the picture from our book, uh, you can see the shape of bars, and here you can see that we have many varieties of the size. Of course, we mm, don't have uh, too much forms, but we have uh, many sizes. And as you need, so these are bars we use for orthopedic treatment, for preparation, this one also. So you can see the uh, special boards with the angle, you can see, and this one for uh, doing the um, additional squares, yes. Then with carpet boards for a dentin and different shapes and different sizes also. You can take photo. Automatic restoration of teeth. Uh, we have uh, this technique, uh, but um, this technique uh, was very popular uh, in the past. And nowadays uh, we know that if we leave. So what is the technique? It's uh, the medical procedure. Uh, when we take um, only um, excavator, for example, uh, only hand instrument, and then uh, we do uh, the, um, the restoration uh, and use, we, we use um, glass ionomer semen. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, very often we have uh, mistakes our uh, this treatment so for of course if we don't need uh, the um, 
alternative method of treatment can okay we can use um, but uh, nowadays very popular the sedation or medical um, medical sedation yeah and we treat uh, our child uh, so in the best way and for a very long result because this method okay we treat for three months and after three months uh, we can have uh, pulpitis in this case, okay? What we need to do, uh, we need to, to do good necrectomy, we need to do uh, endodontic treatment, and if patient very afraid and uh, don't give uh, to do one feeling, yes, so uh, endodontic treatment, I think we don't uh, do very good and very effective. Uh, so, treatment of diseases of heart tissues, uh, yes, uh, when uh, we take them um, hand instruments, uh, then um, for people with, uh, with uh, some uh, disabilities, yes, for example, uh, physical, uh, then treatment of uh, diseases of heart dental tissues uh, in elderly patient. Uh, then in patient with severe general somatic pathology. Uh, in the treatment for the, of dental caries without a drill. Uh, on site rehabilitation work in the treatment of dental caries using the uh, traumatic restorative method and. Uh, can be used, so glass ionomer Siemens can be used independently in patient with a problem oral cavity with a low level of hygiene, a high rate of KPU or DFE, so decay, filling and extracted, and a high frequency of recurrent caries. Thank you for your attention. Maybe you uh, have some question, uh, so I listen to you. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. Uh, teacher, uh, could you uh, extend the lecture uh, to Google Classroom, yes? Uh, we, uh, I think, uh, no, I think we give your lecture in our YouTube channel. Do you have the, our uh, YouTube channel? Yes, yes, and share it on yes. Google Classroom too, please. Okay, guys, maybe yes, one it's, hour. It's, 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 it's better. Sorry? It, uh, it will be better in Google Classroom. You want in Google Class? Okay. Uh... Because we want a PDF. In YouTube, it's like a film, like a video. So uh, studying ah, PDF you want is to, easier. You want presentation? Uh, I don't know, guys, if we can. Uh, but the video you will have in YouTube channel. Um, I ask, okay? Okay, and thank teacher, you. have we write thank our you. notes and send it to you to put our presence. Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's impossible. Uh, I think who is present today? Because 16. it's impossible to put our presentation, our presence in um, Google Classroom. Yes. There is some problems, technical problems. Uh, okay, I don't know because we have a video and we fixed uh, how many students uh, we have today and uh, maybe they uh, have, uh, okay, maybe they have uh, more time and then uh, they write the synopsis and uh, send in our Google class. Because okay. in other way, I don't know. Um, we have a Sorry, video. teacher. Just yeah. uh, can you give us time till next class to write? Uh, till next class? Uh, I don't know. I ask. Uh, I don't know. Because if uh, it's online, it should be the same of offline. So when we have an offline class, the teacher cannot come to us and tell us, like, give up give me 12 p.m. maybe or... Okay, I ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your time. Have a good thank you for evening. Your Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Senti, io te ciò. E vai.